clear, clearly that she didn't. That's why she probably ran out. And that, and I don't know. I think like JW thinks there ain't going to be no other court date. If right. There is, Three I'm sure charges in go, one. See. Huh? My bad, Holly. My bad. My bad. No, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you up. Three charges in. At first, it was three. Financial responsibility, a secure license plate, failure to produce insurance. So, so y'all see at the stop, you can go, you probably want to listen to the recording at the stop. I couldn't hear the recording. Somebody sent it to me. Uh, maybe, I think I had it down low. I had it, it was low. So I was just like, oh shit. Everybody else probably had their phone up, but mine was low. So I'll say, you talking about insurance officer. Uh, what did I say? What did I say? I said, well, I have, I say, just cause I got my driver's license, I'm not traveling. I said, but it's late at night. I'm trying to, I'll probably tell them I'm trying to leave. You know what I mean? And uh, I didn't have my private DOT. You know, I, I had it, but I didn't have it on. Um, but I did have a national card, you know, so. But he, he kind of let me go, I guess, after 20, 25 minutes, he let me go. I lost train of thought too, my bad. Is there any questions about the court case or the documents or the any any of that before I stop the recording? You can stop it. Um, I, 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 just can, I got a question. question. Go ahead. Can I ask, can I ask a question? Or? I have, a, I have a question. Um, so the stamp, the Ghost 24 stamp, is it, would it be better just to have Ghost 24 or should it be Ghost 24 I Heart IRS? Yeah, might, might be Ghost 86. Because <laughs> that Judge 86. <laughs> <laughs> what does 86 mean? It means gone. <laughs> no Thank more. You. Straight up. Oh, he goes to yeah, okay. go <laughs> Any more questions about the packet or the court date or any of that before I stop the recording? What was that? You just want to stop it? If anybody's got anything else to say. Did you stop the previous one? It should be in your uh, I have a quick, I just got on, but I have a, a question about a court case that I'm dealing with. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you, but I can't answer. Well, more than likely, this is this the Holly Show. <laughs> no, you good. Go yeah, ahead. Go. Ghost, Ghost is taking over the court. What's up, bro? What's up? All right. So basically, um, I have a court tomorrow. Uh, I have like two prior convictions. I went to court a few months ago just to find out that I was being rearrested for the same case because it was enhanced to a felony from charges that was used against me from like back in 2007 and 2006, uh, 2007 and 2004. So they took the two charges from back then and enhanced the charge to a prior, up to a felony charge. So I go back to face the judge about this case tomorrow. Um, just a month ago, when I went to court, they tried to give me like a year probation, but they tried to give me that without my uh, public defender being present. But I, I'm understanding that's not even a good choice to have right now. So I'm I'm trying to get some legal advice on what to how to approach this. What is the case? It's a uh, domestic uh, felony battery. Ooh, I ain't, I ain't trying to knock you, but uh, ooh, uh, Holly, Holly, KT, I I don't know. And like I say, brother, I ain't trying to judge you. But you I mean, did you do it though? You have proved that you didn't do it. 
um, for what I'm understanding, it's not even being pursued by the victim. It's the state that I'm facing. I think it depends on this. Did you bring any charges up? I'm sorry, repeat that again. I said, did you counter claim? Did you press charges back? No, no, I didn't. Well, if it's if it's if it's the state, that's for power attorney affidavit from the state, because it ain't the victim no more. It's the state you you going against. So as for the power attorney, huh? and do that hard shit. I mean, because you know all the, I had a lot of um battery charges, but I never hit, you know hit hit them. I used to just file charges back because they used to hit me. And um, it, it it it'll go away, you know. Two negatives can't make a positive. That's how they say it, shit, right? So, but you never press charges back. So I just go after the uh, the state as the name, as the victim, and and, and produce the um affidavit and uh the um power attorney from the um the state. Since the state saying they picking up the charge, I would do a writ of habeas corpus to bring the injured party into court that's claiming the, the assault. And they repick the that's, case. That's, that's also the funny thing about it, man. Because when the when the case first happened, I was the one that called them. But as soon as they get there. You know, of course, they separate the two. They get both sides of the story. But you putting me in handcuffs without letting me know what I'm being arrested for. Then you want to add on the fact that it's resisting arrest to to, to this, this charge. So not one, not just one charge, but you also hit me with the resisting arrest charge, which is, which is a misdemeanor. But still, what for? Why am I being hit with a resisting arrest when I wasn't resisting? I have the right to know what I'm being handcuffed for before you well, handcuff me. You can't resist arrest if you're not arrested. So was you arrested? So you can't resist arrest if you're not arrested. You can't be arrested without a warrant. Did they have a warrant? No, nah, I ain't had no warrant. So was it disturbing the peace? Well, like I said, I was the one that called them um, out there due to the fact of what was going on because of the fighting situation. But in the state of Florida, anybody that's called on a domestic case, somebody's going to jail. That's just how they are up there. Well, that's in most states. That's how they do it in most states. Don't just blame it on Florida. <laughs> yeah, they do it like all of them. But the um the, the state picked up the case, so that's that's pretty easy, cause you need a you, you need an injured party. That's your um Seventh Amendment to confront your your victim, the the, the snitch, with an affidavit. So I asked the I asked the um, state for that. And power of attorney, since they taking over the case, they need a power of attorney or uh, affidavit. So you ask for them. Okay, so I've been to arraignment already on the on the case so far. This case is supposed to dictate if I'm going to trial or not. So is it too late for me to ask for this by the time I go in tomorrow for this case? Well, the trial you, you, you're asking for is, is under the Seventh Amendment, though. That's the trial you're asking for if you're asking for a trial. Okay. But you know, I, if you know you ain't had them, if you didn't want, you know you don't want to call the police. Don't worry, because you got you got a witness the the phone call that you did call.
Well, yeah. last question is this. Can it be turned into a tax issue for the case to be dropped? Well, they all tax yeah. issue. Did you um have it? Did you take any pictures of any injuries? Or they took pictures injuries? of my injuries. Oh, great. Did you and they took pictures, pictures of they they claim that they got pictures of her injuries, but I don't recall no injuries from her behalf. But I know I got a I had a bite on my arm, so yeah. So you, you got evidence. You still got the bite mark. That's been almost almost a year ago. That's how long I've been dealing with this case. You still got the bike mark? Nah, it's gone now. You don't have no pictures of the bike mark? Nah, they didn't even give me a chance to take pictures. They just put me in handcuffs. Well, you, you made the phone call, so you all right. Just stick to the um confront your witness. Ask for the power turn in affidavit. From from the state. Not from the victim. They they taking over the case. This from the state. Act like the state is the victim now, not the the, the, the girl. Oh, you wanna do a writ of habeas corpus? Corpus, because that'll bring whoever the victim is into court. And if there is no victim, then there's no crime. But then you can also subpoena the 911 call or whatever phone call you made to show that you called the police and all that sort of stuff. And then subpoena all the body cam footage and all that sort of shit as well. And then you can get them on false arrest and false imprisonment. Okay, okay. And that's good advice right there. All right. Um all right, I think that's all the questions I have, man. I appreciate y'all. But you want to mention that in court too. If you don't do the habeas corpus, at least mention the false arrest that you did call the police and all that, like he said. Okay, understood. And take all those court documents, like what Ghost just had, take that with you as well and give them all out anyway, because still, it is a tax issue, regardless, every time you go to court, regardless if there is an injured party or not, they're accessing your trust account and administrating it. So hand out those documents as well. You never know, it might just run away as well and close the case down. Uh, what exactly are the documents? If you have a look in the open <laughs> mic chat, um, Holly's posted the list of documents with the links to them all. Sorry, can you repeat that one more time? Click on the open mic, scroll up through the chat a bit, and then you'll see the post from Holly. That's got um, court documents, and I think it's also a pinned message as well, maybe. And it'll have the list of them with all the links to the PDFs of the documents you can download and print out. All right, well, appreciate that, fellas. Any more, more questions before I stop the recording? I did, I did. Uh, you might have said this a couple million times and I missed it bouncing around, but when you, I know you handed them that lovely packet, but did you also let them know that you already CC'd um, the IRS and any other government entity? No, I think he just put it, took it to the um, police department and um, filed it through the clerk. That's what I told him to do. I told him to um, get a um, a case and then file it in his case. So that's as far as he, he went, I think. I don't think he sent it to the RS or the attorney. I told him to send it to the attorney general, too. Yeah, okay. 
attorney general and but he's he is going to send a copy ultimately anyway right or he's leaving it up to them to send it uh, well i told him he had to serve both parties he had to serve the um the, the judge and the um the prosecutor okay um and that's everything everything that he had his claims and all that I'm, i guess i'm speaking specifically about that packet that has a w7 the w8 the w9 8300 well he put the he put the right to travel and then the um his fee schedule and that's that's pretty much what i told him to put it at you but he put the um the Hobbs Act in there. Mm -hmm. He put his um yeah. his um his um state national ID up yeah. in there. Yeah. I caught the what supplemental else? documents. Okay. I'm talking specifically about the the tax doc documents. No, nah, he I don't think he ever asked for the ten ninety nine. I I never heard him mention that asking for the ten ninety nine for the case. Okay. Because I'm just thinking you can hand it to them, but are they going to, what's going to make them actually do something with it? So I'm just trying to verify you, like I said, if um, you're sending your initial copies to, to some other officials first. You're like, I already answered the question. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I still feel a disconnect for some reason because yeah I thought you were sending it to the, the IRS first or at least it's on its way no you have to send it to the judge and the um, prosecutor you gotta give them notice you gotta at least do them to the first then you can send it to um, whoever you wish to but the judge has to get a copy and the opposing party has to get a copy Okay, because normally, I mean, when you've heard, well, for me, when I've heard these, you know, about these documents before, they are, you know, doing it kind of sneaky on the back end first, like, don't tell them, don't tell them what you're doing, just, just send it. You know what I mean? But yeah, that is standard and appropriate to give the notice first. Yeah. You know, I was when Smoking Baby was on last night, he was talking about another form. I think it's called an A O four three zero. Yeah. I'm still researching what it what it does, but what I like about it is that it automatically puts the defendant in a creditor position. Just food for thought. I'm exploring that a little deeper. Okay, that's all for me. Thank you. I appreciate it. The House Joint Resolution 192. Is it 192 or 197? It puts you in the creditor position. Yep, that's true. This is um this form is called an Administrative Office of the United States Courts Case Information Record. Um, and like I said, I have to go through it to see how to use it optimally. Because the other part of that, depending on what type of case you have, is going after whatever beneficial interest you have in that case. Any type of securities, like for me, I know I have some negotiable instruments floating out there. Um, you know, whatever your damages might be, you want to uh, try to resolve those at the same time. I learned. You're going to reference them forms on your affidavit. That's what I do. I don't know. I don't use their forms. I just reference their forms on, in my affidavits. Yes, and I agree with that. I create my do. I redo mine as well. I do the same. Because I noticed when I went to go back to uh, see what the 